All right, guys. Good evening. This is probably when you're watching this video. Um, thanks for being with us at Community Group. We are doing our dead level best to try to keep community groups going because this is where we really feed our souls. This is where we hear from you about how we can pray most specifically for you and your groups. So thank you for making time tonight to be with us. In just a moment, your community group leader is going to um, lead you in some questions. So Tim, thank you. I see you there. And Jason, thank you for being with us tonight as well. Um, actually, I can't see you. I'm pre-recording this. How could I see you? Um, we are going to be going through a book called Suffering by Paul David Tripp. We thought, what better way to give a lighthearted topic to cover over the next eight weeks through a pandemic? Um, we, we really don't want this to be a downer at all. We really want this to be a big help to you. You may not be able to get this book. That's okay. But if you can, this book is phenomenal. I started reading this book before we ever had a pandemic. It's just been a super big help to me. So that's why I think it's going to be a big help to you. Eight weeks, we'll go through it a little bit at a time and try to summarize a little bit. Now, we'll never make it through each chapter, like telling you every chapter and what it's like and giving you a complete summary of the book. But we are drawing our applications and our lessons out of this book and following his outline. So tonight we're actually in our book going to be sort of using chapters one and two as our launching pad, our introduction. And that's what I wanted to explain to you tonight. Um, this book, Suffering, is not armchair theology. If you know what I mean by that, armchair theology means there's some guy sitting at home and he really isn't experiencing a lot. He's just writing about things. Um, this book actually comes out of Paul Tripp's own personal fight and battle with suffering in his life, specifically an event that occurred a few years back when um, unexpectedly, out of the blue, he was feeling 100% perfect and suddenly He's in urgent care and massive amounts of doctors are around him trying to figure out what's happening. What ended up being the case was he was experiencing kidney failure. And um, this caused an immense amount of pain that he had never experienced in his life so badly that he said he, he really wanted to die at that point. And what led eventually after the pain had left was surgery after surgery after surgery. He wasn't even fully recovered from a surgery when they put him back into surgery again the same location over and over again. And he realized his body was getting weaker and weaker and weaker. This was a huge blow to him. And he explains this in his book that just prior to this, he had gotten back on track with eating healthy and began to work out and exercise more. He lost a lot of weight. He said he was feeling better. I think he was in his 50s, feeling better in his 50s than he'd felt in a very long time. And he felt very physically strong. So in just a matter of months, he found himself at the weakest point of his entire life. And he realized suffering doesn't just hurt you physically. It's a physical, emotional, mental, and of course, a spiritual battle. So this book is so good for you guys because it really speaks to people from a place of experience. Uh, you'd rather read someone who says, I've been there before. So that's where this book comes out of. Now, the whole introduction of the book is the idea that you need to realize that suffering isn't neutral. In other words, you suffer a specific way because of the baggage, spiritual baggage that you carry with you into your suffering. Each of us does. And suffering is what usually reveals some of these places in our life. You've probably experienced that a little bit even over the last few weeks as we've been quarantined together. Um, I love what he says. Listen to this carefully. Page 27, he says, you never just suffer the thing that you're suffering but you always also suffer the way you're suffering that thing. And that's the baggage that we oftentimes bring with us. So for instance, he mentions poor theology. He says, we all have a theology we carry around with us. And we're always trying to answer questions in our life. Like who is God? What's he doing? Uh, who am I? Why does it look, what does it look like to live successfully? Um, why do certain things happen the way they do? And he says, when you get into suffering, you realize those questions start to get really blurry at times. And you really have to know, what do I actually believe about God? Is he really good? Um, he mentions two things. First of all, a lot of people, their theology tells them they're suffering because they've been sinning. And God is actually going to punish them for their sins. And he really pulls back from this. That not that God doesn't discipline his children, but it is true that God is never going to condemn and punish us because of some past sin that we've committed. God has placed all of that on Jesus, and we don't have to worry about being in suffering because of our own sin. And then he says a lot of people misunderstand Romans 8, 28. 
Uh, this is the passage that says God works all things together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. And he says a lot of people, unfortunately, have memorized that verse and think it means God will make it all good eventually. Eventually, I'll be through this pain. My, my strength will be back. I'll be strong. And he says that's not always the case. That is not the promise of Romans 8.28. The promise of Romans 8.28 is that God will complete the work that he's begun in you. The spiritual work will always be done. Nothing can stop that. His love will continue. Um, he mentions that sometimes we doubt God. He also mentions uh, we oftentimes um, have unrealistic expectations of life. Um, we think that everything's going to always be the same. I feel healthy. I feel good. I'll keep being this way. And we forget that life changes. Our health changes. Our job situation can change. Really, life is not always going to be the same. He also mentions that we don't take seriously the dramatic brokenness of the world. Sometimes we're lulled to sleep to believe that Hey, it's not too bad here. I mean, heaven might be good, but this isn't too bad either. And he says, our world is groaning to be redeemed by God. And sometimes we forget that the world is seriously broken, that good people are suffering, and that happens in life. Um, I'll mention a couple of others as well. Unrealistic expectations of others. We can elevate people too highly and expect them to be our personal Messiah. And then when they let us down, we're suffering, not just the letdown of the relationship, but we're suffering even more because we've raised them so high up on a pedestal. He mentions pride. Now, get this. He says this. We mistake self-reliance for faith in Christ way too often. Isn't that true? That sometimes what we're actually doing is we think we're trusting God. But really the reason why we're trusting God is because we feel like we're in control or we feel like we're strong enough. And sometimes we pass that off. And he said he realized his, in his own life that some of what he sort of believed was his faith in Christ was actually uh, just his own self-reliance. And he said, we forget way too often that we are designed to live in dependence on God, not independent of him. He mentions um, materialism. He says, sometimes we often look to physical things for our security, like our physical health, right? And if you've ever been through a health crisis, you know, sometimes that shakes us more than anything. He says, money, finances, uh, relationships, health, a job that we have, we can oftentimes take those things and trust in those physical things for our security. And then lastly, he says that oftentimes we carry baggage into our suffering. Uh, he calls it selfism, which means that life is just about us. That really we've lived a life with God included, but really all of it's aiming toward a specific goal we have in mind. Whatever your dream is of the perfect life, this is the way it's going to go because God's my God and he's, he's the one I'm trusting in and I know he's going to bring all things for good in my life and I know what I want. And when that falls apart, our dream of what we thought life would be like falls apart. He says that's just a sign that really selfism is a part of it. We let our life become our own personal Messiah. I'll read this quote to you. It says, The crisis of faith that accompanies suffering is the result of a collision between our will and God's will between our glory and his glory. The key verse through this passage, uh, the key passage tonight for this, these chapters are Proverbs 4.23. He mentions it in the book. This is what Proverbs 4.23 says, above everything else, guard your heart. Everything you do comes from it. We, Soundside Church, we need to be a church that recognizes that suffering is not optional in the Christian life, that people that are suffering should feel welcomed in our midst because each of us suffer. Suffering is essential to the Christian life. And I think this book will be a big help to you. As your community leader leads you in questions now, I hope you'll give some thought to what kind of baggage maybe you've seen in your own life that you carry with you. And then you'll close in prayer asking God to help you see those things as well. All right, take care.